in the previous lecture I have introduced the concept of uh, point estimation what is the problem and we are considering the parametric methods. That means, we are assuming that the unknown populations distribution is known however, it may depend upon unknown parameter. We have considered uh, certain criteria for judging the goodness of estimators. Uh, for example, we have considered the criteria of unbiasedness, uh, then consistency. I also introduced the concept of uh, uh, mean squared error criterion that means, an estimator which has a smaller mean squared error over the parameter space will be considered to be better than the one which is having slightly larger mean squared error. Uh, if the estimator is unbiased, then the mean squared error reduces to the variance of an estimator. So, therefore, uh, we have the concept of uh, uniformly minimum variance unbiased estimator, which we call shortly UMVUE. Uh, I mentioned that in order to obtain the UMVUE, we have broadly speaking two methods. One is the method of lower bounds. So, under certain conditions or sometimes without conditions, one can obtain a lower bound for the variance of an unbiased estimator. Therefore, an estimator which will achieve that lower bound will be called the minimum variance or it will be the minimum variance unbiased estimator. Uh, in this particular uh, course, we will not be discussing those methods. However, let me briefly introduce another method which is based on the concept of completeness and sufficiency. So, I introduced a sufficient statistics and I gave a consequence of that which is called Rao Blackwell theorem that if there is an unbiased estimator which may not depend upon the sufficient statistics, then we can consider uh, we can construct another unbiased estimator which will be simply a function of the complete sufficient statistics uh, of the sufficient statistics and whose variance will be less than or equal to the variance of the original estimator and this will also be unbiased. Now, coupled with another concept of completeness. So, let me introduce that and firstly let me consider the applications of the factorization theorem applications of which basically produces the uh, sufficient statistics in given problem. Of course, one may see that from the definition if conditional distribution of x 1, x 2, x n given t is independent of the parameter, if t itself is a function of say u then u will also be sufficient. Uh, however, we can consider something called uh, minimal sufficiency that means, maximum reduction of the data. Uh, I will not get too much into technical details here rather we look at the direct application. So, let us consider say say x 1, x 2, x n follow say uniform distribution on the interval 0 to theta. Now, how do you write down the joint density? The joint probability density function of <coughs> x 1, x 2, x n is so, I will just write f x that is equal to product of f x i theta that is equal to 1 by theta to the power n for 0 less than x i less than theta for i is equal to 1 to n. Now, in order to apply the factorization theorem, we need to represent in a slightly compact form because here this range is coming separately. So, we write it as 1 by theta to the power n indicator function of x n over the interval 0 to theta into the product of x i i is equal to 1 to n minus 1 and all of them will be from 0 to x n. If we look at this, this can be considered as g theta and x n and this is a function of observations alone. So, here x n is sufficient that is the maximum of the observations. If we <coughs> remember one exercise which I did for the uh, consistency, uh, 
in this one I proved that x n is consistent for theta. Now, here I am observing that x n is also sufficient. Now, here in the uniform distribution theta by 2 is the mean that means, x bar will be unbiased, but x bar is not based on x n. Therefore, I can construct another estimator which will be based on x n and whose variance will be smaller than x bar by m, than 2 x bar for theta uh, it will be uh, 2 x bar. So, we will show it later. Uh, now, let us consider some more examples say consider x 1, x 2, x n follow say beta distribution with parameters alpha beta. That means, I am considering the joint PDF So, that is product of f x i alpha beta that is equal to product of i is equal to 1 to n 1 by beta beta function alpha beta x to the power alpha minus 1 1 minus x i to the power beta minus 1. So, this you can see it will be this can be written as 1 by beta alpha beta to the power n product of x i to the power alpha minus 1 product of 1 minus x i to the power beta minus 1. Here this entire thing can be considered as a function of parameters alpha beta product x i and product 1 minus x i and then h x you can consider to be 1 itself. So, here product x i and product of 1 minus x i that is sufficient. Another way of uh, looking at this concept of sufficiency is in the form of we can also consider Uh, we can consider the distributions in exponential family. Uh, let me define one parameter exponential family and multi parameter exponential family. So, we consider c theta h x e to the power q theta t x. This is called one parameter exponential family. Uh, to give an example, say you consider x following Poisson lambda how do you write down the distribution e to the power minus lambda lambda to the power x by x factorial for x is equal to 0 1 2. This we can write as e to the power minus lambda 1 by x factorial e to the power x log lambda. So, if I define q lambda is equal to lambda t x is equal to x c lambda is equal to e to the power minus lambda and h x is equal to 1 by x factorial. Then this is an example of one parameter exponential family that means, the Poisson distribution belongs to one parameter exponential family. Note that this exponential family is different from exponential density that we discussed earlier. This is exponential family. Let us take say exponential distribution itself say f x mu that is equal to e to the power mu minus x for x greater than mu 
0 for x less than or equal to mu. Then this is not in exponential family. Let us consider say f x lambda is equal to lambda e to the power minus lambda x. Then here this can be considered as c lambda h x is 1 q lambda is equal to minus lambda t x is equal to x. So, this is again one parameter exponential family. Let us consider this beta distribution that I wrote beta alpha beta. This is 1 by beta alpha beta x to the power alpha minus 1, 1 minus x to the power beta minus 1. Now, this we can write as 1 by beta alpha beta. This is e to the power alpha minus 1 log x plus beta minus 1 log 1 minus x. Now, that gives rise to multi parameter exponential family. So, let me introduce that here, because here we are having two terms coming here. So, in general we can define multi parameter exponential family. So, let us consider f x as c theta h x e to the power sigma theta i t i x for i is equal to 1 to k. Then this is called, so here theta is a vector parameter theta 1 theta 2 theta k, this is k parameter exponential family. So, if you look at the distribution that I introduced here uh, of the beta, this one then we can write as C of alpha beta and this is then theta 1, this is theta 2 this is t 1 x, this is t 2 x. So, this is an example of two parameter exponential family. Now, if we look at distributions in the k parameter exponential family and let us apply the factorization theorem and see what is the effect. Let x 1, x 2, x n be a random sample from say this distribution is star. Then the joint PDF of x 1, x 2, x n is c to the power n theta product h x i i is equal to 1 to n e to the power sigma. Uh, let me put here a j because i is being used here. So, j is equal to 1 to n i is equal to 1 to k theta i t i x j. So, this we can write as c to the power n theta product h x j, j is equal to 1 to n theta i sigma t i x j, j is equal to 1 to n i is equal to 1 to k. So, if I consider factorization theorem, then by factorization theorem, I am able to express this as a function of, so this is a function of theta and sigma t 1 x j, sigma t 2 x j, sigma t 
k x j j is equal to 1 to n. Therefore, we can say that sigma t 1 x j and so on sigma t k x j is sufficient by factorization theorem. To give an example here, if we consider this beta distribution, in this case sigma log x i and sigma log 1 minus x i that will be sufficient. Let us take the more popular normal distribution say x 1, x 2, x n follow normal mu sigma square. So, if I write down the joint p d f of x 1, x 2, x n then that is equal to product i is equal to 1 to n 1 by sigma root 2 pi e to the power minus 1 by 2 sigma square x i minus mu square. So, that is equal to 1 by sigma to the power n root 2 pi to the power n e to the power minus sigma x i minus mu square by 2 sigma square. Now, this term we can expand and you can write it as e to the power minus sigma x i square by 2 sigma square plus n mu x bar by sigma square minus n mu square by 2 sigma square. So, this is in effect becoming e to the power minus n mu square by 2 sigma square divided by sigma to the power n root 2 pi to the power n e to the power n mu by sigma square x bar minus 1 by 2 sigma square x bar sigma x i square. Now, we can put it in the form of two parameter exponential family by defining. So, this term is simply the function of parameters. So, this is some function of mu and sigma square. Now, this we can call theta 1 that is n mu by sigma square and uh, t 1 x is x bar. Then we can call theta 2 is equal to minus 1 by 2 sigma square t 2 x is equal to sigma x i square. So, naturally you can see that this is a two parameter exponential family. this is a two parameter exponential family at the same time we conclude that x bar and sigma x i square is sufficient. We can also write sigma x i and sigma x i square is sufficient because this is a one to one function. We can also write x bar and sigma x i minus x bar whole square is sufficient because these are all one to one functions of each other. So, we can write down in this any of this forms. Now, after this uh, concept of sufficiency is introduced, let me introduce the concept of completeness and uh, that will help in obtaining a form for the or uh, a methodology to obtain the complete uh, UMVV. Let us uh, use a notation of P. So, if we are considering the distributions P theta, so a family of distributions, so x. So, we are actually using the notation that x has C d f f x theta. So, in general, we can use some abstract notation P theta just to not to mention x there. So, a family of distributions of x is said to be complete if expectation of g x 
is equal to 0 for all theta implies probability of g x is equal to 0 is equal to 1 for all theta belonging to theta, where g is any function. Now, to look at some simple application, first of all uh, what type of uh, what is the meaning of this thing? Let us consider say x following Poisson lambda distribution. If we consider x following Poisson lambda distribution, let us consider expectation of g x is equal to 0. Now, this is equivalent to sigma g x e to the power minus lambda lambda to the power x by x factorial is equal to 0. Now, this we can multiply by e to the power plus lambda on both the sides then that is giving us g x by x factorial lambda to the power x Now, if you look at the left hand side is a power series in x and we are saying it is vanishing identically over the entire positive real line. The only possibility is that the coefficients must be all 0 that means, we are having that g x is equal to 0 for all x, which implies that the probability that g x is 0 is 1 for all lambda. So, the family of Poisson distributions that is p lambda lambda greater than 0 is complete. Now, we extend this concept of completeness of a family of distributions to a statistic. So, we say that A statistic T is complete if the family, let me say P T of distributions of T is complete. For example, in the Poisson case. x is complete. Similarly, if we take t is equal to sigma x i based on a random sample from Poisson lambda, then t will follow Poisson n lambda and so t is also complete. And of course, a consequence is that a function of complete statistic is also complete. Now, this completeness concept is extremely useful in the sense basically it says that if I am having an unbiased estimator of 0 then that estimator must be 0. Now, that yields to some interesting thing for example, if I say t is complete and I say 2 estimators say h 1 t and h 2 t are unbiased for say g theta. Then expectation of h 1 t is equal to g theta and also you have expectation of h 2 t is equal to g theta. If I take the difference then I will get expectation of h 1 t minus h 2 t that is equal to 0 for all theta. Now, h 1 t minus h 2 t 
is a function of t and if t is complete then this will imply that probability that h 1 t minus h 2 t is equal to 0 that will be equal to 1 for all theta. Basically this means that h 1 t is equal to h 2 t almost everywhere that is unbiased estimator based on complete statistic is unique almost everywhere. Therefore, you can say that uniformly minimum variance and bias estimator can be obtained. So, there is a result called Lehman Shafi theorem. In fact, you have a slightly uh, relaxed version of this uh, completeness that is called bounded completeness. That means, if I consider here uh, g to be a, any bounded function, any bounded function, then I can change this to boundedly complete. So, that is uh, that means, I am uh, in place of any function, if I put only bounded function, if for only bounded function this is true, then the it will be called boundedly complete. However, uh, this is not required here. So, if t is complete and sufficient then h t is u m v u e of g theta that is equal to expectation of h t. Now, once again uh, one can prove actually completeness for various families for example, normal distribution, binomial distribution, Poisson distribution etcetera. But in exponential distribution we have uh, a result which can straight away give the completeness property. I introduce the multi-parameter exponential family that is of this form f x is equal to c theta h x e to the power minus sigma theta i t i x. So, if we have distribution of this nature and we have the parameter space say theta, if it is a k parameter exponential family and if the space theta contains a k dimensional rectangle, then t 1 t 2 t k will be complete and this result is very useful in proving completeness in various distributions in k parameter exponential family a star if the parameter space theta contains a k dimensional rectangle then t 1 t 2 t k is complete. Moreover, if x 1 x 2 x n is a random sample from a star then sigma t 1 x i x j and so on sigma t k x j that will be complete and of course, sufficient. That means, the problem of obtaining the u m v u e reduces to actually determination of complete sufficient statistics and then by making use of that we can simply consider functions of that which are unbiased for the required parametric functions. 
and then you will have u m b u e s. So, let me give you example here. So, x 1, x 2, x n follow Poisson lambda, then uh, t is equal to sigma x i, this is complete and sufficient. So, if I consider x bar, which is simply t by n, so expectation of x bar is equal to lambda. So, x bar is u m v u e of lambda. Now, this resolves the problem that for example, based on this sample I could have considered any number of unbiased estimators for lambda. For example, in Poisson distribution 1 by n minus 1 sigma x i minus x bar whole square let me call it u, this is also unbiased for lambda, but since this is not dependent upon x bar alone because it is using observation other observations also. So, you will have variance of x bar less than or equal to variance of u. Let us consider say x 1, x 2, x n from normal distribution the popular one. So, we have already seen that it is a two parameter exponential distribution. I showed here in the form x bar and sigma x i square or x bar and sigma x i minus x bar whole square. So, here x bar and sigma x i minus x bar whole square, this is complete and sufficient. So, let us look at expectation x bar that is mu. If I look at let me call this uh, uh, s square is 1 by n minus 1 sigma x i minus x bar whole square. So, expectation of s square is sigma square. So, x bar is u m v u e for mu, s square is u m v u e for sigma square. Not only that, we can also consider unbiased estimator for other parametric functions. For example, in uh, this problem, a popular thing could be consider say quantile of the form mu plus say b sigma, where b is an real number. Basically, in the normal distribution as I have explained, this is mu, you may have mu minus sigma, mu plus sigma and so on. So, in general mu plus b sigma is any position on the curve here. So, if we consider this as a function, let me call it q, then for mu we have x bar. Now, let us consider estimation of sigma also. So, we can make use of n minus 1 s square by sigma square, this follows chi square distribution on n minus 1 degrees of freedom as I mentioned yesterday in the discussion of the sampling distribution. Now, if I make use of this, I can consider expectation of say w to the power half. So, that is equal to integral 0 to infinity w to the power half 1 by 2 to the power n minus 1 by 2 gamma n minus 1 by 2 e to the power minus w by 2 w to the power n minus 1 by 2 minus 1 d w. This is the density of the uh, chi square distribution on n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So, let us simplify these terms. this we can write as integral 0 to infinity and this constants will remain as it is. And here I can adjust the power n by 2 minus 1 d w. So, this is nothing but gamma n by 2 
and 2 to the power n by 2 divided by 2 to the power n minus 1 by 2 gamma n minus 1 by 2. So, that is giving us square root 2 gamma n by 2 by gamma n minus 1 by 2. So, what we have proved expectation of w to the power half that is n minus 1 to the power half s by sigma that is equal to root 2 gamma n by 2 divided by gamma n minus 1 by 2. That means, we can write expectation of gamma n minus 1 by 2 into n minus 1 square root divided by square root 2 gamma n by 2 s is equal to sigma. So, we are able to obtain. So, first of all we since x bar and s square is complete and sufficient this gives this is the umv ue for standard deviation. Another thing is that if I plug in in q, so I get x bar plus this uh, root n minus 1 by 2 gamma n minus 1 by 2 by gamma n by 2 s this is u m v u e for quantile. So, you can see this concept of complete sufficient statistic is extremely helpful in deriving the uniformly minimum variance unbiased estimators. And not only that see if we had not considered the complete sufficient statistics then for the estimation of sigma perhaps we would have simply used 1 by uh, square root 1 by n uh, sigma x i minus x bar whole square as for sigma square we were using 1 by n sigma x i minus x bar square or 1 by n minus 1 sigma x i minus x bar square. But if you see this one we are not using that this is slightly different. If we use the concept of minimum mean squared error then some other estimator is also possible, but that I will uh, delay here I will not be considering right now. Now, let us consider the method of obtaining estimators. Right now we have discussed the criteria for obtaining estimator and we have shown that there are estimators which will fulfill those criteria, but for any population we can also give some general methods for obtaining estimators. So, first of such methods is method of moments. This was introduced by Carl Pearson uh, one of the founders of the subject of statistics. So, if we are considering that x 1, x 2, x n is a random sample from a population with <coughs> distribution say f x theta I am putting it in the vector form in general I am assuming it is a k parameter distribution for k greater than or equal to 1. So, suppose we want to estimate theta 1 theta 2 theta k. So, let us define sample moments that is alpha k that is equal to 1 by n sigma x i to the power k i is equal to 1 to n for k equal to 1 to and so on. Uh, let me change it to I put alpha m here because k is used here. consider population moments so mu prime that is equal to expectation of say x 1 to the power m for m is equal to 1 2 and so on so now naturally this uh, mu m prime this will be some function of the parameter so let me call it this function as g m theta. So, for m is equal to 1 2. So, we have k equations 
that is we write mu 1 prime is equal to g 1 theta and so on mu k prime is equal to g k theta. Let me call the system 1. Suppose the solution of the system 1 is theta 1 is equal to say h 1 of mu 1 prime and so on mu k prime and so on theta k is equal to say h k of mu 1 prime and so on mu k prime. In method of moments we plug in for mu 1 mu 2 mu k prime alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha k. In method of moments estimators of theta 1 theta 2 theta k are obtained as theta i head is equal to h i of alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha k. So, you can say that the basic method is that they estimate the population moment by the corresponding sample moment. Of course, when we write these equations this must exist that is this must exist. If they do not exist then you cannot write the equation here. So, this is the basic method of uh, moments here. Uh, in general, uh, method of moments estimators need not be unbiased. That means, sometimes they may be biased and sometimes they may be unbiased. Usually, they are consistent. Now, in fact, you can write the conditions if this functions h 1, h 2, h k are consistent uh, are continuous functions. If they are continuous, then uh, we have already done the weak law of large numbers. So, from there this alpha m will be actually consistent for mu m prime. If uh, alpha m is consistent for mu m prime and h i s are consistent function uh, are continuous functions, then this theta i heads will be consistent for h s h i s. So, you can consider here this is following say Poisson lambda, then x bar is consistent and this is MME method of moments estimator for lambda. If I consider say x 1, x 2, x n following normal mu sigma square. Then what are the moments here? Mu 1 prime is equal to mu, mu 2 prime is equal to mu square plus sigma square. So, if we solve the equation you get mu is equal to mu 1 prime and sigma square is equal to mu 2 prime minus mu 1 prime square. So, if I substitute here, so method of moments estimators of mu and sigma square they will be mu head is equal to x bar that is alpha 1 prime alpha 1 and uh, sigma head square that will be equal to 1 by n sigma x i square minus x bar square that is 1 by n sigma x i minus x bar square. Uh, note that this is not unbiased note that mu head is unbiased for mu, but sigma head square is biased for sigma square, because we have seen actually that 1 by n minus 1 sigma x i minus x bar whole square is unbiased for sigma square. So, if I consider expectation of sigma head square, then that will be equal to n minus 1 by n sigma square. So, this is biased biased for sigma square. 
So, this is a simple and heuristic method for obtaining the unbiased uh, um, the estimators for parameters in any given problem. Uh, now, there may be sometimes some sort of uh, discrepancies. For example, here if I am writing two parameters, then I am writing two equations here. If I have one parameter, I write one equation. Sometimes uh, it may happen that uh, due to peculiarity of the distribution that uh, the number of required number of equations may be more. For example, if I consider uniform distribution on the interval say minus theta to plus theta, then the mean is 0 then the first moment is not useful. So, you can consider the second moment that will be theta square by 3 and then you can use second sample moment to estimate theta. Another thing that was observed in the method of moments estimator is that we have to actually solve the equations. In the examples that I constructed here, it is simple but sometimes you may end up with some very complicated functions. Uh, for example, if I consider gamma distribution or I consider two parameter uh, uniform distribution or if I consider beta distribution, where the mean is somewhat complicated function of the parameter. In that case, the solution of the equations will give rise to some complicated function. So, certainly unbiasedness will be ruled out not only that sometimes continuity of the function may also be in question. Uh, a more <coughs> practical and also uh, you can say theoretically sound procedure was proposed in 1925 by R A Fisher which is known as the method of maximum likelihood. So, In the method of moments, we are making use of the moment structure of the distribution, whereas in the maximum likelihood estimation, we make use of the probability structure or the density structure of the distribution. So, roughly speaking, let me give the interpretation here. Suppose x1, x2, xn is a random sample from a distribution with either PMF or say PDF. Of course, uh, you may have uh, a somewhat different situation in which you may have a mixture also that means partly PMF and partly PDF, but uh, for the time being let me write in a simpler form. So, suppose it is written as f x theta. Okay. So, let me consider the PMF representation. In the PMF representation, in the PMF representation we write probability of x 1 is equal to say small x 1 and so on x n is equal to small x n that will be equal to product of f x i theta i is equal to 1 to n. Now, let me put this uh, in a different uh, form. Here what we are saying, if theta is the true parameter value, the probability that capital X 1 is equal to small x 1 capital X n is equal to small x n is given by this expression. Now, depending upon different values of theta, this value will change. So, if I am considering that means, a sample this has been observed we can actually consider it as x 1 x 2 x n is equal to x 1 x 2 x n that means, what is the probability of this sample being observed. Now, we can call it likelihood of sample x 1 x 2 x n being observed. So, I give a new name and I call it L theta x. This is called the likelihood function. That value of theta we consider as that means, we maximize this with respect to theta. Then that value of theta, theta head is equal to say theta head x is called maximum likelihood
estimator of theta if l theta head x is greater than or equal to l theta x for all theta. That means, we are considering maximization of the probability of observing or likelihood of observing that particular sample. Uh, we can consider some uh, typical example. Suppose, I take say Poisson lambda and I specify say lambda is equal to either 1 or lambda is equal to 2. That means, two values are possible two values in the parameter space. Okay. And uh, we observe say x is equal to 2 for example or let us take x is equal to 1. If I observe x equal to 1, let us write down this probability of x equal to 1 that is equal to e to the power minus lambda lambda to the power x that is 1. So, this is simply divided by x factorial. Now, if lambda is equal to 1 then this is e to the power minus 1. If I observe lambda is equal to 2 then this is equal to 2 e to the power minus 2. So, we look at the comparison of these values which value is larger that is 1 by e or 2 by e square. So, we compare let us uh, just write down. So, I multiply by e square. So, this is e square less than 2 e or if I cancel. So, e less than 2. So, that means, this is actually larger. We are getting e is greater than 2 which is true. So, this number is larger. That means, likelihood of observing x is equal to 1 is more when lambda is equal to 1. So, lambda. Uh, so, we say lambda head is equal to 1 is the maximum likelihood maximum likelihood estimate since it is observed already. So, we call it estimate of lambda. So, look at this I am telling here that two values lambda is equal to 1 and lambda 2 are allowed here. We do not know which one is the correct value. Now, we observe the sample in this particular case one observation I take and it is equal to 1. Now, I calculate the probability of this x equal to 1 under this lambda. So, I am getting e to the power minus lambda lambda. I look at under both the conditions for lambda is equal to 1 this is equal to e to the power minus 1 for lambda is equal to 2 this is 2 e to the power minus 2. Now, I compare these two and I just write a simple inequality 1 by e greater than 2 by e square which is equivalent to e greater than 2 which is true. Therefore, we conclude that this probability is higher. Therefore, lambda is equal to 1 will be called the maximum likelihood estimate of lambda here. So, in you can say this is the fundamental principle of the a maximum likelihood estimation that we consider the likelihood function. We look at that value of the parameter which is actually maximizing. That means, we are basically maximizing the likelihood function which is actually nothing but the I have given the probability mass function interpretation. So, now we generalize this in place of PDF uh, this one suppose I consider PDF then we maximize that. So, in general so in general we define the likelihood function as the joint PMF or PDF of x 1, x 2, x n. So, that is product of f x i theta and we call it L theta x and maximize with respect to theta. So, say it is maximized at theta head x, then theta head x is called the 
maximum likelihood estimator of theta. So, I will be showing through various examples this. Let me consider a uh, simple application which we have been considering earlier for uh, the discussion of consistency and sufficiency etcetera. So, now, now let us consider this for this purpose. Now, you can see that the likelihood function will be 1 by theta to the power n indicator function of. So, let me just write this. and this we can actually write as 0 less than or equal to x 1 less than or equal to x 2 less than or equal to x n. Now, to maximize this we see the maximum value will be attained when theta is minimum, but the minimum value of theta will be x n. So, theta had m l e that is equal to x n. In fact, we already proved that this is sufficient, we can also show it is complete. Uh, this was shown to be already shown to be consistent, it was sufficient. We can also show it to be complete. We can also show that x n is complete. Uh, just briefly I will obtain actually the UMVV based on this to complete this discussion. See we had obtained the probability of x n less than or equal to x that is equal to product of probabilities x i less than or equal to x that is equal to x by theta to the power n. So, the density function of x n is actually equal to n by theta to the power n x to the power n minus 1. If I consider the expectation of this, what I get here? This is equal to n by n plus 1 theta. So, that means expectation of n plus 1 by n x n is equal to theta. Also, let us consider say expectation of g x n is equal to 0 for all theta, then this will imply integral g x n x to the power n minus 1 theta to the power n d x 0 to infinity uh, sorry 0 to theta that is equal to 0 for all theta positive. Now, you are saying that integral over intervals of the form 0 to theta for all such intervals. Then you can consider say Leibniz result by differentiation etcetera, you can prove that actually that g x is equal to 0 almost everywhere. That means, x n is actually complete. Now, x n is complete sufficient and this is an unbiased estimator based on x n. So, t is equal to n plus 1 by n x n is un u m v u e of theta. In uh, tomorrow's class, I will discuss a few more examples of uh, maximum likelihood estimation and the method of moments and what is the comparison between them and uh, then we will move over to the concept of uh, interval estimation also. So, we stop today's lecture at this point.